Welcome to the 2021 MISHA football mechanics video. I'm Kenny Seifert, the MISHA coordinator for football officiating. It is my pleasure to serve the game of football and work with the officiating community. The focus of this video is the mechanics we use on the field. It is important that we are using the proper mechanics and signaling. Using proper mechanics, rotations, movements, and signals will go a long way to having the right officials in the right position to make the right call. I am responsible for the script and the place selected in this video. Please note that no attempt was made to embarrass any institution, coach, student athlete, or official. These clips are used for the purpose of making officiating better. The goal of this video is to develop a consistency in the proper mechanics to be utilized during competition. Our focus must always be to work hard, be mobile, and get the best angle possible to officiate the play. It is imperative that wing officials are pinching in on plays. Other terminology might be flexing in or using the accordion. Moving forward, we will use the term pinching in. Both of these wing officials are an example of how to stay on the sideline, square off, then hustle while pinching in on the play. However, neither wing official provides the dead ball signal after the play is over which is a must. The dead ball signal gives the 40-25 second clock operator the indication to reset. Would like to see the umpire, after blowing his whistle to stop the play, provide signal number three. Note that it does not appear that any official stops the clock. Outstanding mechanics by the line judge shutting down this play. The line judge hustles in waving his arm to stop the clock and blowing his whistle to let everyone know that he is shutting down this play would also have liked to seen a flag on the ground. Excellent goal line mechanics shown by the linesman and the line judge, although a portion of the line judge can only be viewed by his shadow. At the snap, both released to the goal line. As the runner was downed around the two-yard line, both hustled back up to the two, squared off, hustled and pinched in with the dead ball signal. Pitcher, perfect. Again, Excellent goal line mechanics by the linesman on this play. Linesman gets to the goal line and then hustles in and provides signal number seven to leave no doubt in anyone's mind that he has the runner short of the goal line. Outstanding job. When the play is coming directly towards you, it is important to maintain the correct angle and line of sight for the goal line. In this play, the line judge is on the goal line and has backed up several yards along the goal line to maintain his safety while not compromising his view of the play. This mechanic could not be executed any better. While not specifically covered in the game official's manual, it is recommended that when the ball is snapped between A's five-yard line and A's goal line, the wing officials break back towards the goal line at the snap. This is commonly referred to as reverse goal line mechanics, the reasoning is to be positioned to rule on a safety play if required. Nice coverage on the third down play by the linesman. However, the linesman does not provide the dead ball signal, is focused on the exact spot where the catch and forward progress was made, and then looks back at the front stake to determine if the line to gain had been made. Would like to have seen the linesman walk with a purpose to the forward progress spot while providing the dead ball signal and watching the players on the sideline that just went out of bounds with the play, as the forward progress spot is one yard short of the line to gain. Per Rule 3-5-10D, an official's timeout is to be taken when a helmet comes completely off during a down or the subsequent dead ball action related to the down without being directly attributed to a foul by an opponent. Great coverage getting to the quarterback. However, we should also stop the clock. Note that the play clock should be reset to 25 seconds. The play clock and game clocks would be restarted on the ready for play. Lastly, by rule, the quarterback would be required to leave the game for at least one play. On this play, there is a live ball horse collar foul called, which is a good get by the line judge. Although not visible on this clip, there was a dead ball personal foul against both teams at the conclusion of the return. As the crew is marking off the penalty for the horse collar foul, 
the referee should provide the following signals and announcements. Personal foul, horse collar, against the kicking team, point towards the kicking team, 15 yards from the end of the run. Dead ball, personal foul, kicking team, point towards the kicking team. Dead ball, personal foul, receiving team, point towards the receiving team. Penalties offset, signal number 10, first down, and point in the appropriate direction. On free kick plays, the line judge should cover 15 yards down the sideline per the game official's manual, albeit on this play 17 to 18 yards. The following is recommended. Responsibility for forward progress from goal line to goal line belongs to the linesman and the umpire. On this play, the umpire marks forward progress. Would like to see the umpire stop when reaching any players. In this play, the two kicking team players who recovered the dead ball before heading in to help spot the ball. This keeps all players within the umpire's field of view. The line judge move with a purpose down the sideline and be prepared to cover a long run. Ideally, the line judge would stay in front of the runner. Would like to see our officials wait a split second or so after the play is over to turn towards the sideline to retrieve Team R's ball. This ensures great dead ball coverage. Nice job by both the back judge and the line judge to be in position to mark the spot of first touching by the kicking team at R's 11-yard line. The back judge did a great job of hustling and staying inside the hash marks on this play to signal the touchdown. Rather than squaring up on the goal line when signaling the touchdown, officials need to turn and watch the players for personal fouls or unsporting acts during the dead ball action. On this quick pass play, would like to have seen both wing officials on the line of scrimmage to rule if the pass is caught behind or beyond the neutral zone. Note, wing officials, as a general rule, are breaking downfield at the snap when they read pass. Wing officials should hold their position until at least receivers on their side are 10 to 12 yards downfield. While this pass is caught behind the neutral zone, had it been caught beyond the neutral zone, there would have been multiple penalties, offensive pass interference, illegal man downfield. Recommend that when ruling on behind or beyond the neutral zone, that the pass be caught clearly beyond the neutral zone to rule beyond. Textbook mechanics on this potential pass play. Linesman stays home, has the sense to know when the pressure is coming, and backs up to officiate, then comes in crisply while facing the sideline to cover the players out of bounds. The referee then comes in to clean up and help with the out of bounds players. Job well done. In this play, the linesman has transitioned down the field too quickly. The game official's manual states to stay on the line of scrimmage until the receiver or receivers on your side have gone at least 10 to 12 yards downfield. By leaving downfield at the snap, the linesman has put himself in a position such that he is officiating back towards the ball as opposed to keeping the play in front of himself. Also note that had the linesman stayed on the line of scrimmage, he would have been in better position to rule on the potential offensive pass interference by A9. On this play, the wing official stops below the numbers and kills the clock, indicating that he believes the line to gain has been reached. The umpire after placing the ball on the hash mark, then tosses the ball to the line judge to place at his feet, after which the referee comes over and declares that the line to gain has been reached. Overall, this does not look as clean and crisp as what we would like. When the line to gain is in question, the covering official needs to hustle to the spot of forward progress and stop the clock only if the official is certain that the line to gain has been reached. If he is not sure, then he should provide the dead ball signal. It is recommended that the line judge declare whether or not the line to gain has been reached or if a measurement is required. The game official's manual states the referee, linesman, and line judge can rule on the direction of a pass. It is recommended in the mechanics checklist that the wing officials should punch backwards on passes thrown to their side of the field. Note, on what appears to be a clear backwards pass, the linesman rules that the pass is forward 
while the referee has a beanbag down, which would indicate that there is a fumble on the play. Had the linesman taken a step or two back along the sideline, he may have been in better position to rule on the direction of the pass. Would like to have seen the crew discuss the play and determine that the pass was backwards. We need eyes in the backfield on this play to rule on the two blocks highlighted. Umpire's focus should stay in the backfield on this play, as the referee and the linesman have the runner and the blockers. The referee has the quarterback at least to the neutral zone, where the linesman would pick up the runner. Note that the line judge should also have eyes on these blocks. Great pickup by the umpire for the illegal man downfield. However, the umpire fails to signal to stop the clock after the ball is declared dead. If the crew is using the wireless communication device, would prefer that the umpire communicate that the foul is an illegal man downfield via his wireless communication device as opposed to providing the signal to the referee. One could argue that it is obvious that the offended team will accept the five-yard penalty and replay the down here. However, the referee does a nice job of confirming that the head coach of the offended team would like to accept the penalty. This umpire is in great position to rule on this potential illegal forward pass. Note, it is recommended to not be overly technical on this foul. Make sure that a foot is clearly beyond the neutral zone before penalizing for illegal forward pass. It is very important in these moments to keep your frustrations in check and not react emotionally to the situation. The linesman calmly tosses the flag and reports the foul to the referee. Job well done. Coaches, this is exactly why staying out of the restricted area during play is of utmost importance and is critical to the safety of both the official and the coach. Excellent whistle control. Watching this play, it is self-explanatory. In addition, the linesman had enough discipline to retreat back to the sideline after squaring off and pinching in just a little bit in anticipation of the runner being downed, and followed the play down the sideline all the way, stopped the clock, and kept his eyes on the players out of bounds. Adding to that the efforts of the back judge to assist with the players out of bounds results in outstanding officiating. And we are going to end this mechanics video with the ultimate hustle play. Notice the athleticism and acceleration by the referee to get to and dig into the pile to determine which team recovered the ball. In addition to the referee being on his knees to make his determination of ball possession, it is also nice to see a beanbag on the ground. Compliments to the crew on a job well done. I hope the plays in this training video will assist every official in their efforts to improve their positioning and ultimately their play calling. I know that each of you are eager and excited to begin the 2021 season. Here is to wishing you the best of luck and a great season.